Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Lethal Weapon. So in this episode, uh, we have a case. Roger get Roger and Cole get a case that is very similar to a case from 10 years ago involving a serial killer who's basically going after womanizers. Um, it's a very interesting development in the case, considering the fact is that the person representing the guy, Dan Harrison, the guy that Roger arrested 10 years ago for this crime, is uh, Leo's representing that guy, which is interesting. Not how I thought Leo was going to pop up in this episode, uh, but that was kind of interesting. And I love that he's got his own podcast, which Avery listens to, and he's talking about, because he knows details about it, he's like, oh yeah, the third episode, he kind of villainizes you about stuff, even suggesting that maybe you had something to do with uh, Dan's arrest, like you framed him for the murder and stuff like that. Which is also interesting, too, because it's like, for one, it's like Leo bad mouthing Roger like that. It's like, hey, this is your this is your buddy, this is your friend, and you're doing all the times he's helped you out and stuff like that. You've considered him a friend. It's just funny that you backstab him like that. Because even later on, when um, Leo's getting help from Trish, she even brings that up. It's like all the stuff you said about my husband being a dirty cop and all that. And he goes, oh no no no, I just said that you know, kind of just you know for for the you know listeners and stuff like that, just kind of spicing things up. Um, I was also surprised. I was like, I was like, okay, because I knew this was gonna be a Leo episode. It just turned out not to be what I thought it was gonna be. He does mention his wife, but it wasn't re in reference. I thought like it was gonna be about getting his wife out of jail or something like that. Turns out that that's not the case. But I was wondering like, okay, so what's it gonna be like with Cole and Leo's first introduction? Uh, Cole does not like Leo because he does not like ambulance chasers. Literally sticks a piece of gum on his card, folds it up, and hands it back to Leo. And he's like, huh? well, now I have your DNA. It's just kind of like, okay. Love you being who you are, Leo. Um, so it's it's an interesting case because Roger is so certain that he was right. He's like, no, 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 no. I got the right guy. There's no doubt about it in my mind. And the interest, you know, because Roger's kind of stubborn to the point that he is. But then other things kind of come up that maybe like, hey, maybe he isn't the guy, especially because of all the stuff that Trish is helping Leo come up with because it's like a lot of discrepancies and stuff like that because like the uh his lawyer at the time wasn't even willing to like look into one of his uh claims that like oh i didn't commit this murder because i was actually like it he had an alibi for one of the murders it was like a particular like the one that plays the biggest role in the um episode was it uh, mcgregor was that the dude's name so which i i thought that's kind of a nice element to the episode kind of in a sad moment of like it causes issues between Roger and Trisha. It kind of pits them against each other, which has happened previously. But for her, it's like Leo convinced her to take the, take this on because it's like no other lawyer is going to be, defense lawyer is going to be as nice to Roger. Like Trish, she's going to be more fair about it, which she appreciates. But obviously Roger's kind of pissed because it means like you're questioning him as a cop. And this is also coming from the woman he loves. So it's like a little bit of a conflict of interest. But for Roger, he's so adamant about like, no, 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 I didn't get this wrong. And it's even something later on Cole asked him, is like, why does this bother you so much? Because it's like he's going over it because he's thinking like, okay, there is certain things that came up. And he starts looking into it, realizing that there are some discrepancies here and there. And I guess for Roger, it's because he was so certain and just the thought that, hey, maybe I messed up so bad that I put an innocent man behind bars. I don't, I think, you know, I don't think it's just the aspect of Roger thinks, that, oh, I'm the most greatest detective, whatever. I'm, I, I can't be at fault or anything like that. I think it's more so that he just, the thought of that he messed up in such a big degree like that, that he might have sent someone away innocently. That he'd, You know, because he may start second guessing. It's like, maybe I didn't go about things the right way. Maybe we slipped up some times here and there in the investigation. Maybe in that we didn't, maybe didn't follow through in, in a lot of aspects, but it's like, no, we did. A, it's like, no, you did the best that you could. Like you're only human, you know, but you know, Ro, uh, Roger, I guess, holds himself to such a high standard that he was just kind of like, you know, and also, like I said, just the thought of like, you potentially took 10 years away from somebody. It's hard thing to live in. I was like, man, that's gonna be that's gonna be suck. Like, how is Roger gonna handle this? He even tries to recuse himself from the case, but Avery's like, no, I'm gonna have my best detective on this. Like, you know, that's the only way that you know I'm gonna accept this getting done. I even love the whole thing between Avery and Roger when uh the ADA Turner shows up and he's like, Give me a theory, and he's just like, uh Roger? And he's like, Oh yeah, you know it's a, a captain. And they're just kind of bouncing back and forth, and Avery throws out the whole grooming, like, oh, maybe he groomed somebody. And then 
Roger's like, you, you grooming? You really think that? He's like, well, it sounds good in a lot of the like true crime podcasts I listen to. He's like, you really need to find a different hobby. It turns out there is some truth to that because I that whole conversation with Jacob, I didn't think it was going to go down the route that it did, that being the guard who was looking over Dan all that time. And I was like, it didn't cross my mind to think like uh, – because, like, Leo's interviewing him and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, yeah, Dan doesn't deserve to be in there. He's like, oh, yeah, because you think he's innocent, right? It's like, no, he was right. And Leo's like, excuse me? I was like, I couldn't believe that. It was like, I was like, oh, 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 that went down a route I didn't think it was going to. I thought, like, what we're going to do is start implying, like, oh, he might be guilty. Like, I thought it was going to be like, no, 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 he believes in what Dan's doing. Like, he believes that someone should do what's happening, that uh, – these womanizers need to be taken care of, but I was like, oh, I, I think he believes that, but he wasn't behind it. No, it turns out that completely wrong on that front because he literally has, because especially because it's like, oh, wow, the evidence can't get even more because it's like Leo literally finds a pair of bloody gloves in the uh, bathroom uh, toilet basket. And even like Leo's in there talking about like, oh, I got to use the bathroom, got um, IBS, and then he's just kind of like, I got to get out of here. He's freaking out and everything. Uh, leaving a message on his podcast recorder and stuff like that. That's so good. And even Leo's kind of being like, oh, like the guy's about to hurt him. He's like, please, I have a loving wife who's going to get out of jail soon, maybe. <laughs> and then, like, uh, when he's saved and everything, he's like, oh, he's like, it's, it's okay. Like, Roger's like, it's okay. And he's like, no, it's not. <sighs> I wasn't even recording. Okay, can, you know, can we do that, like, one more time? It's like, I love you, Leo. You're so much of an opportunist. I love it. But, uh... Turns out Roger was right and wrong. Wrong in the sense of uh, he had nothing to do, like, uh, what's his face, had nothing to do, um, Dan had nothing to do with the one, one of the murders. Turns out he was involved with the other three, because also this whole situation with um, Jacob is kind of like, okay, yep, 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 he's definitely the guy, like, he was inspired by this dude, so, because he did pop in every once in a while to check in on, so it's like, yep. So he was innocent of one of the murders, but he's still a terrible dude anyway. Uh, just because Turner was on the payroll of some very bad people, those bad people are connected to all of this. Um, I love that Cole smells a dude's hands, and Avery's like, "What? What you got?" He goes, "I don't know." And he looks off. He's like, "I, I got it." And I'm like, "Okay, what's this all about?" He's like, "Jelly donuts." I'm like. What? That was your big revelation? It's like, what well, that's got to do with anything? It's like, oh yeah, just because you knew the cops were coming, you were going to hide some evidence and stuff like that. I was like, oh, okay, okay, that makes a lot more sense. So, But I also like the climax of everything, like Roger's kind of hanging off the side of the building and like Wesley's got, got him by that rope. And it's just like, you can see blood coming on, being on the rope because Wesley's holding so tight and the rope is cutting through his hands. And he was like, nah, I'm not going to let you go, Roger. And he both go falling off the building. And luckily they got saved. And it's just kind of like Roger's like, I'm never going to go home. I'm, I'm never going to leave my home again. And Wes is like, yeah, you guys think I could do that again? You could literally one of people like, no. <laughs> uh, so I thought that was kind of uh, pretty nice. Because um, an aspect of that I really like too. It's like, it, and it kind of deals with um, Cole's side of the story is um, Roger, like he told Roger, there are two types of mistakes. Those that you have to live with and those you have a chance to fix kind of you know talking about his own situation but also talking about rogers like this situation if you send away an innocent guy hey at the very least it's something you can fix um but in cole's situation he ends up running into rafi um honey's uh brother and obviously he holds a lot of resentment towards cole because cole's been giving him checks and stuff like that but he doesn't want them um, I even love the manager at the uh, hotel being like, yo, that's your mind. Like, oh, man, can't believe someone did this to you. You know, you're such a good person. You're that's why you're like my favorite person, Cole, you know, stuff like that. He's being so, like such a dude. Um, but uh, nevertheless, like. Cole is trying to make up for it, because, but, you know, for Rafi, it's like, are you trying to pay me off? You're trying to make me forget it? You're trying to forget yourself, which he's not trying to. It's just like Rafi's here. He knows he's going to college. He wants to He wants to do something, but it's like doing that, it's like he, he can't change the past, what happened. And, you know, you can't blame, you know, because that's even when it would happen. Like, he's like, Cole was like, yeah, I know exactly who did it. And it's like, I'm not going to blame him. Like, he has his reasonings for doing it, so... But I think the whole situation kind of got him thinking about things from a different perspective. Him and Rafi end up running into each other and he ends up talking. Like it, it seems like they are at a good place. 
he kind of apologizes, but like Cole was like, yeah, I kind of had to take my car in because someone kind of let out a lot of anger on it and stuff like that. A little side note with that whole thing, I think it's kind of fascinating. It's the fact is that at the beginning of the episode, you see uh, Cole watching Central Intelligence, the movie with The Rock and Kevin Hart. And then, like, you know, it wasn't until Hani was like in the past, like giving him the DVD being like, hey, man, I got this. Even though, like, it looks nothing like The Rock on the front. He's like, no, that was like a character, like, uh, interpretation or something like that. Um, but he was kind of like, oh, yeah, like, uh, you don't like The Rock? And he's like, no, I like The Rock. The moment he said that, when the moment Cole said that, I was like, right. I always think about it because it's one of the movies I always associate with Sean William Scott. But then it clicked on my head. I was like, right, of course. You were in a movie with The Rock, which has to be weird because it's like, that's just, I, I think they added that in there for a meta level. He even like ended a movie, like the movie him and Rafi went to see was Rampage. So it's just, it's just this meta level to that whole thing I thought was kind of interesting. Um, so that's kind of funny. Um, but you even see Cole at the end kind of taking it out on his own car, beating it up. It's like, oh yeah, this is the, but he got insurance on it and everything. And he's kind of letting out a lot of anger he has. And it's like, and Ralph is like, oh, you're a crazy dude. He beeps the like, uh, you know, Cole, uh, beeps the car to make sure that it's still okay. And then it turns out that it's the car behind him. I love it. It's like, what? And even Cole's like, he's like, don't worry. I'm a, I'm a, he tells Ralph, he's like, I'm gonna leave a card. So... I am curious to see if there is going to be more of that in the future, like since they are establishing that Rafi's in the same area and everything. So because what he had basically done was ensure that there would be a deal set up so that Rafi and Ani would be able to come to California because he's going to say, oh, you're loving California and get them, you know, for them helping out. And he made a promise. And that's why he takes this even more heavy because it's like not only just how young he was but also because I promised to get you out of there not only did I make that promise to you I made that promise to your brother and I let you down I let you both down in that regard uh, so you can understand why that's haunting him even more but maybe this will kind of go towards not making him forget but maybe it'll ease his guilt maybe I don't know like it's not like Cole's the type of person that would say like I deserve my guilt to be eased you know so but I, uh, so I'm very interested to see, you know, if we see any more of him and Rafi together. Uh, they are living in the same areas, essentially, so they'll probably run into each other from time to time. But I also love that, like, Cole's just looking at it, he's like, they're not even the same color for the car. So I thought that's kind of a nice way to end the episode all. But another aspect to this episode is the whole situation with RJ. Turns out RJ wants to go to Costa Rica to uh, apprenticeship for, like, learning some coffee stuff. And Roger's super pissed at him, like, don't, that's stupid, that's a dumb idea, but RJ's like, I'm going to do it anyway, the fact of the matter is just because you want to stay here all your life, and then, then Roger fires back and like, me, oh, you mean the fact is I stayed here, built a home, you know, a home that I raised you, the reason why I wasn't out there just gallivanting, like, gallivanting around the world is because I was here raising you, so you could be here right now talking back to me. And so that becomes, you know, an aspect to it, because at the end of the day, this is what RJ wants to do. And for him, it's like he just wants his dad's support. And ultimately, when it's all said and done, he does get it. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's just because Roger loves him so much. And it's just like he wants you to be OK. But for RJ, it's like, hey, I, you know, I just I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. I have no idea. You've known for such a long time what you wanted to be me. I'm not in that position. Like, I'm hoping this will help me do that. But it's like, yeah, I got some things figured out. I'll go there. I'll live with some friends and stuff like that i'll figure out he's like don't worry i won't starve he's like fine and he goes here slides him some money and stuff like that he's like yeah just some walk around money so you can actually go out there and get yourself something and he's like he doesn't 100 percent agree with what rj's doing but he does support him in this regard and you know trisha trying to fight back her tears and everything and it's just like it's a beautiful moment and then it turns out rj can't go in the first place because his passport expired like a week ago and it's like oh wow look at you you're you're so unprepared and everything so they're kind of laughing but at the same time you know they're kind of happy because it's like hey never mind he gets to stay around so it's all good so overall like i think it was a great episode in that regard of just everything turns out like i said roger wasn't 100 percent wrong so i think that kind of made everything a little easy because it definitely would have been interesting like, oh if he had 100 percent and gotten it wrong but it's like oh yeah no the dude dan is a terrible person and then leo's like oh yeah i got him um 
Yep, I proved him in we proved him innocent for the one crime he didn't commit. Even Leo getting a statement for Roger being like, Yeah, and he's like, Oh come on, Roger, just be on my you know, just interview, just some words and it's like I just it was it was just my I was just doing my job and then Leo got it and then Cole being like, Nope, I'm not going. I'm not gonna be you know, you know, because he's like, Oh, you're a good guy, Cole, and Leo and then Cole was like, How are you so sure I'm not a bad guy? And Cole tries to play it off to Roger, but like, no, 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 I'm just playing, I was just messing, I was just saying whatever I could to get him to go away, but Roger's like, whether you be really believe it or not, like, the fact of the matter is, you are one of the good ones, Cole, so I thought that, you know, like I said, just a roundabout, just great episode in that regard, so I'm very interested to see what goes down in the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about, until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love, I do the voice, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.